Oh, yeah. Oh, well, nice. Yes, yes, we are live now. Yay. Awesome. I don't know if anybody can see us live. Happy Wednesday. <laughs> Happy Wednesday. Yay. It's our first time, me and Amy, doing this together. Our girls hang out. Yes. Yes. Sorry, Amy, you want to tell everybody why we're here? <laughs> Right. I actually approached Jing myself because um, I've you know, been watching uh, her message, which is uh, spreading the uh, message and helping women with issues of body confidence. And I was like, wow, I've never seen anyone doing this before. And it's so important. So I'm, I'm here right now um, because uh, Jing is uh, a collaborator for our I Am Creator team and I obviously work for I Am Creator. So I'm here to support Jing and just help push her message out there. So, uh, Jing, uh, I'll pass over to you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Amy. It's such an honor. And I felt so, like, you know, honored when you reached out to me. And when we started to connect, we found out that we have a lot in common, especially that, you know, you come from an athlete background. And also, I have a bit of health and fitness background myself. So, immediately, we clicked. And it is yoga, YFM yoga that brought us together, right? Like yoga union that united us together. And we both mutually, you know, have, we're mutually on the same page uh, when it comes to like, you know, empowering women on body, mind and spirit development. And uh, especially like my main message now is to help women, you know, build body confidence and self-confidence. And me and Amy, we've been talking a lot about this. She's like, oh yeah, I went through something like this back in the sports industry. And I shared with her what I went through as a fitness coach back in the day. So we're like, you know what? We got to let this be heard by a lot of people out there, right? Men and women, you know, but because, you know, we are here to empower, you know, our, our female creators here. So uh, if you're men, if you're listening right now, don't feel left out. You are included, okay? And feel free to type in the chat box. Where are you tuning in from? We see uh, we have um, 18 people watching right now. Wow. Yes. <laughs> amazing well, yeah and those of you who haven't met us um you know I, i'll let emmy do a bit of amy do a bit of introduction and then i'll tell you guys quickly who am i why are we here <laughs> thank you jing so actually um i'm jing, well, one of jing's yoga teachers uh, so i've been i've been kicking her butt a bit <laughs> she's hardcore she's hardcore in a good way <laughs> the last uh, seven weeks but she's stuck she's stuck with it she's a very strong lady and um yeah so a bit about me actually um most of you probably just seen me pop up <laughs> like a blonde actually i'm not really a pose <laughs> <laughs> i'm not a uh, i'm not a natural blonde but uh, this blonde like whirlwind just whoosh, into i am creator um I only started following Master in, in March, uh, February and March time, and then all of a sudden now I'm here. My background, um, most people may, may have guessed from the gun show. Yes. <laughs> is the uh, gun showing. I'm an athlete. I'm an ex-professional uh, swimmer. I used to swim for Great Britain, and I uh, won quite a lot of awards and uh, went to a lot of international competitions um, representing the country. And um, that was really, I would say, my, my biggest struggle um, with, with body image came from that because um, the, the way that swimming uh, used to portray, well, let's just put it this way, the way that uh, people see swimming and see female swimmers is different to reality. For example, it, it seems like it's a very glamorous sport. Um, <laughs> But let me tell you, it's actually not, you know, it's not like you've got these stick thin women walking around in, in tiny swimsuits. Right. Um, it's not the case. Actually, um, I'll get more, more into this later. And um, so I think that really started my, my, my confidence issues because I was a swimmer from a very young age. I basically grew up in the sport. And wow. um, yeah, and then after that, I, you know, did some, I did some traveling. I also went and swam in America for a while and um, similar issues. It's different culture, but similar issues. I was at Arizona State University, uh, did some more traveling, wound up back here. And um, after the birth of my son back in the UK and um, long story short, now I'm working as a yoga teacher for I'm Creator. So these gains are actually like yoga games I actually didn't swim much I, I was at first during lockdown and then like I was realizing I was getting really strong just from yoga <laughs> so, yeah um, actually yoga can tone you up and make you buff not really no that's not a word <laughs> body I love it. 
if I'm out at the pool, then I need to be doing yoga, one or the other. I'll pass over to Jing for, for an introduction on the her side, and then we'll get more. Oh, no, that's it. beautiful. Keep going. I can hear you all. I can hear you talk all day. And <laughs> there's a lot about your story that I don't know yet. And then so I'm always curious, like, oh, my God, how long did you swim? And what was it like, you know, competing and being around, you know, people in the sports industry, you know, and especially what 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 I'm most inspired um by Amy was the fact that actually is the fact that she's so disciplined. She has that athlete champions mindset. And that's something that I feel personally I really need. And uh, we'll talk about it maybe next week. <laughs> but you know, I just want to share a lot of my love for Amy and also uh, learning so much from her, you know, athletes mindset and um, the routine and discipline. Um, so a little bit about myself. Um, so some of you may have seen me popping up live and doing some funky TikTok thing here and there in the creator's circle. And um, you may have heard me talking about confidence and body confidence here and there recently. Um, so I actually come from an architecture background, design architecture background. And uh, because of my personal passion, my personal passion in uh, health and wellness, I got myself into uh, fitness and nutrition coaching for well, maybe five years already. So I switched from 10 years in architecture to five years in health and wellness. And I'm recently, recent couple of years, I started to um, basically coach people, not just on, you know, uh, health and nutrition and fitness, but also most importantly on the most importantly on the mindset part. So body, mind, and spirit all together. And uh, I'm very honored to be a collaborator here with I'm Creator. So I want to like really specialize. Uh, after working with so many people, men and women, I found out that you know, most of my clients are women. And I found out that, you know, uh, women, not only that a lot of them need that sort of like physical, you know, the body transmission, which is something that I've been doing for the past few years, but also most importantly, to get a long-term result, it is really the mindset change and also a lot of work to be done internally. So, which is why, you know, being this circle, this circle is all about, you know, manifestation, positivity, right, and right. high vibrations. And I, you know, I decided, you know what, this is where my calling, my purpose is. I have to really empower more women on the, the holistic health side. Right. So not just, um, you know, okay, I want to lose some weight. Okay. You know, eat some cabbage. <laughs> okay. Right. It, it's more than that. Um, yeah. So that's a bit about my story. I'm a, um, personal uh, transformation coach. I guess that's the word for that. Or you can just call me like a wellness coach and the the girl that likes to crack some jokes. <laughs> so I don't know. I may have to like script some stand up comedy for you guys one day. Who knows? <laughs> so yeah. So Amy, our topic today. Uh, we do plan to come here like regularly. So if you guys do like to see us, if you don't, then okay, then we we'll just. <laughs> not be here if you do want to see us here like on regular basis like weekly talking about different like wellness related topics especially for women and if men you have special requests yes we'll, we'll, we'll make sure that we take care of you guys too so um yeah so that today we decided to start with uh, body image and Amy shared a little bit at the beginning, and I also shared a little bit why it's so important. And um, we do want to kind of explore a little bit more on the body image and how it's, um, how it's affecting women out there and how can we like overcome that. Are you guys ready? If you're ready, type ready in the chat box. We'll be checking the messages while we chat with you guys here. <laughs> We've got quite a few messages already. So, uh, hey, Amna. Nice to see you, Amna. I think Amna, oh, yeah. I know from, from yoga, from that was actually the start of my journey. Kendra, we love you. Yes. And Axel, I think, might be in here too. Axel? Axel? Oh, yeah. Axel's such a champion. <laughs> now I think of Axel, I think of Kung Fu Panda. <laughs> yes, exactly. It's, it's Mariam? That was, that Hi, was Mariam. Hi, yes. Mariam. Oh, so, right. I got my Mariam. friend Kimi here. Bonjour, Kimi. I can't speak French, but yeah. Every time when I see uh, my French friend, I just feel like popping out a few French words. Um, yeah, so Amy, what do you think, like from your experience um, and from what you've seen, what are the common like body image issues that women struggle with? So from from my um, personal experience, there, there were two levels to it. I'm, I'm going to go into detail, more detail in, in the sports and fitness industry, but um, obviously, um, the way that body image is even portrayed in your family is important. So I, I noticed growing up, my mum, my mum suffered with anorexia very severely, mm. and um, I grew up um, not really aware of that. But on some level, 
it was uh, it was registering that um, someone who you know was very very small, um, very thin, petite lady actually used to tell me that she explained it to me that she look, would look in the mirror and um, see a whale. I was like, how? Oh. It blew my mind. Okay, <laughs> so fast forward a few years and, um, you know, swimming for me was, uh, became my life very quickly. It, it was a matter of just started up as a hobby and then um, maybe at the age of six or seven, then you start to do competitions and then you w- win one competition and then you're like, maybe I can win, okay, regionals. So it's called the Midlands. Nice. Maybe then oh, I win regionals. What's next? Okay, maybe I can win nationals. Okay, win nationals. What's next? And then after a while, you're stuck on this uh, conveyor belt without even questioning it. And it became my whole life and my whole focus. And as I mentioned at the beginning, so swimming... Um, in your, if you're not a swimmer, then in your mind, it's very glamorous, right? And, and sexy <laughs> sport, but it's actually not. Um, we get the impression that swimmers are very thin and petite, skinny, uh, like, like I mentioned, wearing these tiny mm-hmm. swimsuits. Um, mm-hmm. Let me set you straight on that. Uh, when, you might think I look strong now, but when I was a professional swimmer, I was built, okay? Not, not really actually in a traditionally sexy way i was mm-hmm. my arms like i would try and wear a um a fitted top and it would be like my shoulders would be pulling it up tight and then it was i could right. barely move <laughs> you got that inverted if triangle I, if i lifted my arms too much then it would like bust out like the hulk and <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you've got no ass if you're a summer no boobs no ass okay right let's right. just get it out there right, um, right. back then this was not seen as very feminine. Um, so, and th- the second part of it is actually muscle weighs a lot. Um, it weighs more than fat. And mm-hmm. um, I'm sure Jean can g- give more, more detail on that. So um, it, be- it became back then when we were in the sport, there was a time where coaches started to get very technical about sport and training. And they started to weigh us like religiously a lot, maybe at least once a week. And, um, what was happening was I was training, you know, four hours a day in the pool, two in the morning, two at night, going to school all day in the middle, maybe some dry land in the, and so my, my calorie out output was, was very, very high. And, um, but my coach was like, why are you gaining weight? Um, he didn't even calculate. So he's like, you need to lose weight. You need to lose weight. You need to lose weight. So for, for a while it didn't, um, it didn't really affect me because I was young, but I remember definitely in my teens, um, I became more self-aware and um, I started to, to, to question, okay, well, why am I so heavy? Yeah, I think once at a party, um, I, when I was drinking, I don't drink anymore, but when I was drinking, I, I um, may or may not have been um, on the floor at some point and someone tried to pick me up. And I always remember them saying, wow, she's actually really heavy. And that like really stuck to me. So, oh my right. God, yeah. But it was mostly because of the muscle. And actually I have yeah. a very high bone mass now. Now I understand that. But back then, all this started to compile up. There was another point too, where my coach, um, I stopped improving in the sport. I hit a plateau and I was working my backside off and no improvement. And my, my coach um, decided at the time that he tried everything. So he said, it must be a weight. So, um, right, okay. So he kept saying, you need to lose weight. You need to lose weight. I said, well... Um, I'm not really eating enough and I'm training, I'm really weak and tired, um, but fine. And so I, I just did what he asked me to do. And I, I became really skinny. Um, my family got worried about me. Um, my boyfriend at the time got worried about me. They all commented, I you know, crashed and burned and had no energy left at the end of that season. Um, so it's, it's, been, it's been a constant battle, I think, with, with this. Um, the second part with the weight side of it and the expectations, um, of people, particularly in terms of shape. So it's not just about body weight, right? When you get on the scales, um, mm. it's about the shape. So as I was saying earlier, swimmers okay. have no boobs, <laughs> broad shoulders and no ass. Um, we have decent legs, so that's apparently okay. So thank you for allowing us to um, you know, be acceptable in that way. <laughs> but um, other than that, you know, you've got the expectation of um, well, you need to be strong, but actually you can't look strong because that's not sexy. So it's just a yeah. no-win situation. Um, yeah, yeah. And 
you know, it became like a constant battle. So in the end, my confidence just was just hit the ground um, to the point where you know, we're going to touch more on. Um, we're just talking about out, outward confidence. Jing does an amazing job talking about other other areas of confidence, too. So really, um, even when I now actually get so many compliments, because these days, thank goodness, actually strong women is sexy yes that's I right know. all about the muscles yes <laughs> thank you i used to get told by the boys in school you look like a man they're probably jealous oh, it's probably yeah. because i could oh they wish they had your body <laughs> yeah i'm stronger than you but so but but back then you don't question that do you just accept it right you know i'm i look like a man it's terrible it's terrible but now actually you get women in the gym go oh my god i wish i had your arms mm. and most like most men are like oh great legs and it's it's i'm, I'm so happy about it but the yeah. damage has already been done right. so uh, i'll pass That's over different to, now yeah, too i'll pass over to jing in a second but basically what what i have right now is you know i've started to step outside my comfort zone since since following uh, being involved in the circle um master really you know pushed me out there and like the response has been amazing i'm you know mm -hmm. people messaging me telling me how amazing i look okay and i'm not saying i'm not taking that compliment i'm really grateful for them but it like it goes through this filter it's like you look amazing i wish i looked like you and i'm like i don't i don't think i look amazing i see why okay what what are my issues right well flat chested my hips <laughs> really broad like most women go in and mine are just kind of like down like that um so I just see all these things and I think I, I don't look good you know um and so it, it goes through that filter that socially conditioned filter that I've had mm -hmm. so mm. <laughs> that was a long uh, a long explanation I'm actually really uh, grateful to Jing to allow me to get that out there I'm going to pass out pass over oh, to her get it out get it out of your chest yeah. and I love you sharing it it's really important when you what you have just shared like what you've gone through because when you get the words out there right so many women and men you know now they have hurt you they can relate i'm sure let me know in the chat box how many of you that you're watching right now or replay you can relate to what um, amy has just said whether if you're like an athlete or sports person or not but you know like just hearing Amy's story, I can relate to a lot of it, uh, although I'm coming from a completely different background, um, but, you know, that sort of, like, especially the part where Amy, Amy said about social conditioning, you know, we're all conditioned to, to, to believe or being brainwashed to think that, oh, you know, being beautiful, you know, or being um, aesthetically pleasing, we're supposed to have that, you know, like, I don't know, just give me a celebrity celebrity's name, right? You know, that celebrity's body, Victoria's Secret Angel's body, you know, that kind of stuff, right? You have to have the nice balance of muscle, but also, you know, the right balance of feminine curves, right? So like, that's, I don't know, like, what's the percentage, like one in how many million of people <laughs> will have that kind of like, you know, that kind of body. And it's not, um, how should I say it? It's not, I wouldn't say it's not natural, but it's, it's, it's not like, uh, I, I'm lost for words, you know, it's not something that we were born to be, right? So, um, yeah, thank you so much, Amy, for sharing all that. And I, it's the story that I've always been waiting to hear, you know, the extended version. I'm sure there's a lot of details, you know, behind it. And we'll talk about those in the weeks to come. I'm sure a lot of you guys are dying to hear more about Amy's story. So write in the chat box, <laughs> write Amy's name in the chat box. You want to hear more from Amy. And um, yeah, so like, you know, Amy touched on the, um, the weight, the shape, and also the social conditioning and the expectation of what to look as an athlete, but it's hard to kind of like measure up to that, right? Like you want me to have, you know, the, the performance, you want me to have that structure, but I can't have too many muscles, I can't be too heavy, right? It, it's such a struggle and it's, it's very uh, mentally, uh, what's the word, damaging too, right? You're like, where should I, you know, where should I fit in? And I went through something similar, but I guess in a different context when I was working as a fitness and um, fitness and wellness coach back in Asia, and uh, I don't know how many of you guys are from Asia or you're Asian, you know that, you know, in the Asian culture, being skinny, right, being skinny is the standard, it's like the beauty standard. Um, I mean, that's kind of universal for a lot of, you know, Western countries as well, right? But in Asia, the curves are not something 
you know, to be appreciated for. Whereas like, you know, in the Western, you know, non-Asian countries, right, you know, we're all celebrating curves and now it's all about the booties. But in Asian booty, no, nobody wants booties. Everybody just wants to be skinny. So for me, it was really a struggle when I was leaving Hong Kong for 10 years, especially as a fitness coach, right? Like people would look up to me, they want to learn from me. But at the same time, <clears throat> Um, it was never verbalized, but my coaches, my mentors will always tell me that, hey, you know what, Jean, if you lose another like 10 pounds, you know, like your bottom is too heavy, right? They literally said that to me. And that really, really kind of like, I just say it, it really hurt me. It was like a stab, <laughs> you know, it was a stab when you're like, oh, you know, because I always, I had always been, I just say, it, uh, conscious Okay, before I became body confident, I was always conscious of, you know, what my body shape is, you know, my body shape is not a typical skinny, you know, Asian girl body, it's always like a bit wider in the hips. And I always, always for some reason, because maybe genetics, I got my dad's muscular legs, right? So I don't really have that typical skinny girl's body, Asian girl's body. And so as a result, my coaches told me that, you know, you have the potential to look skinny, right? And if you get skinnier, if you lose like 10 pounds or how many pounds of weight, um, you know, your, your students, your clients, you know, would, uh, you know, stick with you longer. Not that they didn't, like, <laughs> actually, I had a lot of students, despite the whole body thing, right? And also you will get more students, you will get more clients. That was, um, you know, what they threw at me. So for a very long time, I was conditioned to think that, okay, being skinny in the health and fitness industry means that you're gonna be successful because they always say that your body is your business card, right? So I don't know if Amy has heard of that, you know, especially for people in the sports and fitness industry, people look at your body and go, okay, do I want to, it's like a billboard, right? Do I want to go with this person or not, right? It, it's all dependent on your body. But, you know, a lot of people just ignore the fact that, you know, everyone's genetic makeup is different. Everyone's lifestyle is different, right? The background's different. Metabolism is different. And um, there shouldn't be one size, you know, that like one dress size that defines, you know, what is fit and what is healthy. So that's something that I was going through, like that kind of struggle, body image struggle I was going through that, you know, I constantly actually felt like I was not good enough as a coach because I did not have that body that, you know, like my coaches told me to have, you know, very similar to Amy, right? You know, what the coaches would tell you and that really means a lot. And also the expectation, the, 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 the assumed, I can only say that now looking back, it was the assumed expectation from the clients and the community because that's that's the culture. So you assume that, oh my God, all my students in my class, everybody would expect me to look a certain way. Am I, are they thinking that my butt is too big, right? Like, or oh, my legs are too chunky. And I, I also get a lot of um, actually compliments from boys about my, my quads. So I have very muscular quads and I'll always get compliments from like boys about it. And I will always hate it. I'm like, oh, I really don't want this like big, thick legs. And I have been called thunder thighs before. So, right? yeah. so I'm like, oh, you know, the thunder thighs really stuck in my mind and kind of like defined my sensitivity, like, you know, the body insecurity and sensitivity. And then, you know, the more the boys complimented, the more I'm just like, no, no, I don't, don't give me those compliments, you know, because I really can't see what's so beautiful about them. So like very similar to Amy, you know, I was going through that kind of body image, not happy with my, um, my uh, my body shape and also weight weight was not so much an issue but it was more like the body shape you know like how can I get myself to look like that and you know it, it was before I started to accept myself like you know internally just like what Amy said you know the confidence has a lot to do with you know how we see ourselves inside it's not just about the physical appearance because that's not long term you know, what if, you know, something happens, you know, you put on weight, you lose weight, you know, you may go underweight or overweight and does it actually kind of reduce your, I should say, you know, um, your, your integrity, you know, your self, um, your self-worth, right? So, um, yeah, so that's a big thing for me, you know, just that battle of, okay, how do I fit into, you know, <laughs> the, the social conditioning? Yeah, so um, I believe a lot of uh, women, a lot of our female you know, creator goddesses here may be able to relate to some of it. So let us know like what sort of like body image struggles and uh, insecurities and issues that you personally go through. And, uh, but we have found this out a lot of times. Uh, we have a lot of women talking about the weight, the body shape, 
right? The body shape, the weight a lot. So I think those are the very common ones. And we will cover more on those in the weeks to come, like, you know, what to do, when, and how do you actually identify if you are actually uh, unhealthily overweight or if you're overweight, you know, by just a little bit, how do you like change your lifestyle to uh, give yourself the balanced weight, right? So yeah. Amy, do you have anything to say about it? <laughs> it was it was so interesting um, just watching you um, and listening to you speak um, because because I'm I'm looking at Jing and I'm just thinking she's so beautiful and I see her you know her body when Thank she's you. doing yoga and I think she looks beautiful and it's like why can't I do that for myself? It's so why am I holding myself up to a different standard? Um, you know, so say if uh, like maybe there is some, I'm not saying there is any imperfection, but you look at someone else and maybe they've got, if they've had some, a kid, they've had, got some stretch marks, but it doesn't, but you, you don't, you look at them, you still think, well, they're still beautiful, but you look at your own stretch marks because I have a child and, or you look at, you've got a tiny little bit of like arm um, flab or something like that. Okay. And, and you still think, well, they're still beautiful, but why can't I give myself the same, break that I give other women now the interesting thing is is that you know I'm listening to Jing I'm listening to her say that she's got these body confidence issues but I think she looks beautiful and then I and then you know other I don't know what she thinks about me maybe she <laughs> oh, but, then, no. but then you know you're perfect <laughs> this is it so what's that right so she looks at me she thinks she's like she's she's looks perfect and I look at Jing I think she looks perfect so why can't we do that for each other and it, it's really something that I've learned over the years is that actually you look at the model right so say if I um you know, I've had I've had conversations with women who are very petite and like Jing was mentioning the perfect the perfect um body you know I, <laughs> I compare myself a lot to Kaina <laughs> yeah, in oh. the group. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes but I'm sure she has her insecurities too. And I've spoken to these women who um, have, you know, the perfect model body. And they look at me and they're like, God, I wish I had your arms. Mm. It, it makes no sense. Like Where, why are we comparing ourselves all the that. time? <laughs> why not just accept it? And like, uh, who, who just messaged me? I think it was... Um, Natasha, she's like, you can have my boobs. So she said, oh, yeah, I, want I, that. I want boobs. She wants less boobs. <laughs> what are we? <laughs> There's always something with pick on, right? <laughs> what are we doing to each other? What are we doing to ourselves? This makes no sense at all. Like, yeah, so yeah. basically, you, we're just not happy. And why? And why? Why can't you be happy? So that the main thing that really I've learned over the years is, um, I started on this journey, and yes. I did use fitness to help me along this journey. Um, but essentially the, the, the moral of the journey was I had to become happy with myself. Th this sounds so Disney, right? But it is genuinely, <laughs> and it's such a cliche, but it's so true because I was speaking to Master just before he did um, Jane's, um, the Jing, sorry, yeah. <laughs> Jing's, Jing's body confidence webinar, you know, and it's interesting to see it from, from an outs uh, from a male's point of view as well. And I, I was talking to him and we were describing how, well, if we don't change what's on the inside, master is amazing at changing our um, socially conditioned beliefs about ourselves, our BS, our belief system. If we don't change that, then, well, you end up like me, right? You've got people, you've got people, maybe loads of them every single day messaging you, telling you how amazing you look and it just bounces right off you this just makes no sense so you you must 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 work on the belief system alongside working in fitness that was crucial to me because when I'm in the water when I'm swimming I feel strong when I'm doing yoga I feel strong and it's not about being strong in my body it's about strong in my mind and my soul so I can start to ignore this bs yeah. <laughs> that we've just talked about because then and that was part of the journey I was becoming stronger in my body and fitter in my body and becoming stronger and healthier in my mindset as well and that whole process has now got to the point where I can't say that I I look in the mirror and I'm like you know you're beautiful I, I can't I can't lie to you guys I, I still look and I see all the flaws but um, when people are giving me the confidence the the compliments these days I think I believe you <laughs> I believe you I don't just say you're wrong I say I believe you now I just wish that I could just look in the, I, my, my one thing, my one wish really is I could look in the mirror and see what they see, but I'm, I'm, I'm on the way. You will next week. I'm very confident. Yeah, next week you will, <laughs> especially with our challenge coming up and then you will for sure. Oh my God, Amy, you're so, that's one of the things I love about you, that you're so honest and so open about, you know, what's 
have me inside and you know you're not afraid to speak up and share you know your your inside world and okay How, how's my sound yeah it's a little low okay How, how's it now how's my still, sound? still a little low unless it's my computer it could well be my computer okay yeah if everybody can hear me give me a yes in the chat <laughs> i just want to be sure because the, the, the speaker has been playing up a little bit so if not i'll just put that there so i i was gonna say that you know did you catch let me put this down yeah so now we can't hear you at all that's so funny <laughs> what you can't that's hear me perfect. at all whatever you oh, did it's okay. perfect yeah <laughs> Don't move. I just twisted. I just okay. twisted the, the jacket. Yeah, girls, girls, yeah, support, Just twist it. It'll probably be okay. I know, or or smack it, right? Yes. <laughs> um. Yeah. I was saying how I love how like this. Is one of the things I love about you, Amy, is that you're so honest and so open to share your, you know, the inside world. You know, your feelings and what you are going through. The vulnerable, uh, the vulnerable, you know, part of you but also, you know, the strong part of you. So we see that that whole picture of who's aiming. And because this actually, that's why I was telling you that you will you will start to agree with people's compliment next week because you're so open to everything. And, you know, you're so self-aware. So that is actually helping you um, change and transform faster than just denying and go, okay, I have no issues. I have no problems. And I, I heard like really loud and clear from, Amy just now. So girls, you still watching? Take notes. Amy was just saying that through her training, right? Through her uh, swimming training and yoga training, it's not just like training her physically, training her to be physically strong, but also training her to be holistically strong. And the more strong you become, the more strength you build, especially for your soul and your mind, the stronger you become, the more uh, certain you are of yourself. Right. So the more certain you are of yourself, the less doubts that you have, the less, you know, second guessing and the fears and all that you have. Like when you uh, receive a compliment or when you look at other people's bodies, you know, the more you are sure of yourself, the less you will compare yourself to others. So that's um, that's what I heard from Amy. And thank you so much for that. And this is something that everybody needs. Right. And you definitely have the chance to do that, especially now we have the uh, yoga challenge happening. And, you know, if you haven't really joined us, what are you waiting for? You know, we're already on day, day three today. So you still got two more days to train with us and many, many other chances too. And um, yeah, so actually one tip for me, I would like to uh, share with everyone here from uh, for, you know, how to remove, you know, that body insecurity, how to start working you know, on yourself to move forward is um, start to recognize yourself as a very as a unique being start to accept yourself as a super person as a superhuman i always like to use the term superpower what is your superpower and i believe a lot of you will be like uh like you know like amy she's like yeah you know i'm strong right or many other of course many other superpowers but a lot of people will be like huh what's your superpower are you talking about i'm not x-men i'm not wonder woman what are you talking about you all have superpowers and that is the first process to getting to know yourself authentically. When you start to accept yourself as who you are, what makes you unique, you start to go, hey, yeah, I am unique. Yeah, I am good at this, you know. And especially if you look at the body side of things, right, as a starter, okay, we're not going to go too deep today. But let's just start looking at the body alone, right? What can your body do for you? Instead of picking on your body like, oh, cellulites, right, stretch marks and all these flaps, Look at what is your body capable of and start to amplify that. Hey, you know, I can run. Okay, not bad, right? I can run. Okay, then give yourself more credit for that. I can run, you know, and what else? Amy, give me some examples. I can swim, uh, yes. I, <laughs> I can dance. I carried a, a, a human inside of this. <laughs> oh my God, yes. For almost 10 months. That's marvelous. Um, you tortured That's... me from the inside out, <laughs> but I, <laughs> right? He, yeah, he was an active baby. That was rough. That was a tough pregnancy, um, but I got through it. it was what really else? Giving you a lot of kicking. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was as if he was grabbing my my tendons and my nerves and twisting, and there was there was then them moving around like three sixty degree turns. <laughs> so. Yeah, I got, I got through that. that yoga right now. <laughs> exactly. Maybe that's what he was doing. <laughs> he did all the training inside you. <laughs> wow. 
I mean, really, we give our bodies such a, such a bad rep, but when you really, when you pay attention, look how hard it's working for you. Maybe it doesn't, it's keeping you alive. This, again, it sounds very Disney, sorry, but it's, it is true. You, you literally wouldn't be able to do anything that you enjoy without your body, okay? It's, yeah. it's just wouldn't. So anything that you enjoy and you appreciate, you also have to appreciate your body because it's your vehicle. You wouldn't be able to do it, dancing or fitness or whatever lying around watching netflix you still need your body for that eating yeah. <laughs> you still need your body so we need to we need to be more appreciative <laughs> definitely yeah I, I love what you just talked about here because it reminds me of what master always tells us that you know we are spiritual beings here living a human life so we're all spirits inside this human form right experiencing this physical life and, you know, how can we experience a physical life as, you know, like our highest being as, you know, our, you know, our pure spirit without, you know, like appreciating our body without knowing, um, you know, without being connected, you know, as one with our body, right? So don't pick on your body, stop shaming your body, stop hating your body, really, for whatever it is, right? Stop, lo stop loving it, stop taking care of it, right? And that's, you know, the, the undertone of our message, you have to take care of your body. And um, I definitely have to like, uh, I think this is something that Amy and I also agreed on that we, even though we're talking about body confidence here, but we don't advocate things like, for example, like a lot of you guys know the body positivity movement is very big now, right? So there are a lot of like large, like really, really large obese women out there. Like I love them, but you know, we're, we just want to say something that, you know, if there are some health issues there, right? Like being super like over, like unhealthily overweight, right? is actually not healthy. So really like, you know, take care of your body, change your lifestyle, you know, um, consult like a coach or something like that, right? Because when you're like super, super large, okay, super humongous, it can actually, I'm sure a lot of the, because I've actually come across all the clients like that, they have high blood pressure, you know, high cholesterol issues, diabetes issues, and a lot of different, you know, um, health issues there. And we don't want that to happen to you, right? We want all of you to move around freely and healthily and happily without feeling the aches and the pain in your body. So that's something that I, I want to make very clear. You know, we do celebrate all shapes and sizes, but, you know, we also have to be health conscious and be aware of what is a healthy balanced weight, right? So that's something, it's like a disclaimer we have to put out every time <laughs> when we talk about body confidence here. Yeah. I think it's, it's actually a really important point um, because and at the end of the day, um, I remember getting to the point where um, after, after my son was born and I, and I really hit a very low point in my life, I just actually gave up on myself and, and my life. And I, I really did actually gain a little, I, I just saw one of those pictures pop up in my timeline today and I was like, I'm not sharing that memory. You know, I didn't even want to be in a picture with my son because I was so ashamed about how I looked. Now that's not healthy, you know, and the, the physical issues, they're also not healthy, but um, it, it is quite tough because it took me a while to even want to get a swimsuit on. I didn't want to get a swimsuit on. I was just, you know, I started out running. So it is tough because those people can't even bring themselves because they're so ashamed to, to even go and swim or do anything. So it's just a vicious cycle, which we, which I'm so glad we've got people like Jane to help us break, you know, n not just working on, as she is a, 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 a brilliant fitness coach, but also a mindset coach too, to change the two, the, well, the three, the, the body, the mind and the spirit all together. Yeah, thank you so much. You know, um, I'm actually looking forward to a lot of like um, amazing uh, collaborations and projects that we'll be working on together. So let us know, like, you know, whoever's watching right now, I have to like keep checking my phone to see who's watching right now. Let us know like what sort of like topics and what sort of like uh, themes and projects you would like to see from us in the future. I will definitely, you know, like, you know, make, you know, this show better, this show. <laughs> the women's wellness wednesday show www so um you know hashtag www here and feel free to like you know write down any sharings you have from your personal life and any questions you have you know we uh we want to be committed we want to commit to like serving you and we want to come here every week to really um you know uh contribute to your wellness right especially there's a lot of things going on and you know women we go through a lot in life too so um you know we actually have a very special invitation for, for all of you before we conclude today's session 
Uh, it's going to be very exciting. It's coming up next Monday. So write it down in your calendar. Block out your calendar. August 31st, Monday to September 4th, Monday to Friday, UK time, 3 p.m. This is 3 p.m. UK time. So you can do your time zone conversion. What time is it in your time zone? So in my Pacific Standard Time, 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 10 a.m. Okay, I can't give you guys all the different conversions. I have a lot of friends from India asking me what time is in my time zone. Maybe Amy, you will know. Um, you I can add think. four and a half hours. So that would be 7.30 p.m., I believe. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's a good time, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so maybe when you are eating dinner, you can watch us. So we have this five-day five day body confidence challenge. So I'll be hosting it with Master Shreya Kashina. We'll be co-hosting the women's. Okay, if you men, come join too. Okay, women's body confidence five-day challenge. And for, for the five days, right, you will receive a workbook, you'll receive a journal, and you'll receive the daily live coaching will come live in here, Creator Circle, every day, 3 p.m. to give you the coaching. It will take you step by step from day one to day five to complete the whole roadmap, the whole roadmap of how to build a healthy body confidence and how to build a body love for yourself. So this is a very unique opportunity. It's a one-time only thing. So if you miss it, you know, either you watch the replay or it's best if you come on live so that you can ask your questions and you can interact with me and master. And I know Amy will be there too, <laughs> right? We'll have Amy as a special guest, yes. So this is your unique opportunity. Uh, we'll put the link in the um, caption and put the link in the, in the chat box right now. And while we do that, uh, Amy, you doing that or I'm doing that? Oh, you, uh, I'll do it. Yeah, because I have that that link. Yeah, I have it memorized. So while I'm doing this, uh, we actually had um, two questions from uh, two of you, two of uh, two of our beautiful creators, Sonam and Isto, asking about uh, healthy nutrition here. So the first question from Sonam, uh, Sonam. Okay, sorry if I'm not pronouncing your name correctly. Is what do I eat? Uh, what sort of like. Uh, diet or healthy nutrition routine would you recommend for a healthy and perfect body <laughs> okay amy you want to answer that see i've tried so many fad diets and variations over the years that really my only ever advice to people who ask me this is you need to find something that works for you you need to find something that is healthy that you enjoy eating. Yes. And that fills you up. Those three things. Okay. Um, I can tell you what works for me, which is, um, so <laughs> this is going to sound crazy, but like a sandwich, peanut butter, a banana and honey sandwich, for example, will fill me up for ages. And like it, it yeah, it gives me a lot of energy and um, it, it fills me up. So just think you'll find your staple foods beans lots of i'm vegetarian but i'm not going to say you have to be vegetarian mm. that will work for you. that works for me um mm -hmm. but before that you know it was um just you just find find something that you enjoy eating why because if you don't then you will get bored of it get annoyed fight with yourself crash burn binge on the things you actually like eating and then start all over again um then it's also got to be healthy. So there's things like beans and um, like high protein, not too high. Mm. Don't go crazy on protein. Protein's like mm. right now. It's just yeah. But yes, I agree. Slightly, slightly higher in protein, slightly lower carb. Don't cook carbs. You need them. Okay. Uh, well, I would just, I don't want to say don't cook carbs. If you're cutting carbs, it's working for you, but I need oh, carbs. We need carbs. We I need carbs. carbs. I work out. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe if yeah. I didn't work out, I didn't. Um, and then, so it fills you up, but also is, is pretty healthy and you enjoy to eat it. And then once you've done that, it's, it's very, very easy because you're not fighting with yourself to do some crazy old fruit diet or, you know, or meat diet, the opposite end of the spectrum. Yeah. Because it doesn't work. You, you can stick with them, stick with them, stick with them. Ultimately, fight, build up all this resistance, blow up, big binge, feel crappy about myself have to start all over again and it just doesn't work that's my take I on know. it yeah i love we just share amy it's it's great it's very similar to what i would suggest you guys like one word i'll give you guys is balanced balanced diet 
And also, like, similarly, I don't advocate any sort of, like, extreme sort of, like, diet fats out there. And what I have been practicing and what's been working for my clients and what I recommend for my clients is always balanced diet. And, you know, like, I do not say, okay, you have to go on a vegetarian diet or vegan or anything because uh, everyone's lifestyle is different, right? Everyone's, like, cultural, religious belief is different. So we cannot, like, force people to go, like, with, okay, what I'm practicing. I'm mostly vegetarian. I'm not 100%, but I'm mostly vegetarian. And I also, like, as a vegetarian, I'm also very uh, mindful of, like, you know, what are the plant-based protein, making sure that I get fats, protein, and carbs into my uh, into my daily routine, plus, you know, all the micronutrients and everything. So, um, you know, so we're not too extreme, right? Like, you know, some people will be saying, oh, can I just eat clean? And then I just drink green juice all day. Oh, no, don't do that. Okay. <laughs> don't do that. Yeah. You need to have balanced diet. Yes. So uh, remember that. I think this is actually something that we could talk about on maybe. On yeah. Because I have exactly. a lot of could, yeah, could, let's let's do that. Yeah, if you guys want to know more about this, maybe we can do a special episode next week about you know the the, the body confidence diet, <laughs> right? The healthy diet. There's this quote that always comes to my mind when people ask me about diet, and it's from I believe it's from the Buddha, right? He was on he was on the uh, the boat, and he'd been living his very um, he'd obviously come from initially a very wealthy eat everything um, diet, and he had everything that he wanted. Then he went the other way, and he was really austere, and he just quit everything. Was he having a spoonful of rice a day? Right. And he was on the boat. He saw a, a sitar player um, and a teacher float past, and the sitar player. Um, was being told by the teacher, if you wind the string too tightly, it will snap. If you let it too loose, it won't play. So mm -hmm. it's balanced, right? right. If, you, if you are too strict with yourself, it you'll snap. Mm -hmm. If it's too loose, then you're lying, you won't play. You'll lie in bed all day. Right. Yeah, we're not progress. Yeah. Mm. Everything in moderation. That was right. just like that's beautiful. Yeah. And that's actually what we're learning from our yoga, our yoga training too. everything in moderation, everything in balance, equilibrium. Right. So Sonam and everyone else who's curious about it, I hope you got that message. And another message, um, another question from Esto, it's very similar. Also talking about what to eat to get healthy, glowing skin, flawless, her words are flawless, glowing skin. I want to know this one. <laughs> yeah, this one's actually very similar. You know, you need to get all the nutrients into your body and, um, if you're listening or if you're watching replay right now, all you need to write down is this. Okay, I'll give you the formula for a perfect skin. <laughs> I get this a lot. 70-30. Yes, 70-30. 70% is what you eat, inner nutrition, okay? What you put into your body. Because the state of your skin condition is a reflection of your state of health, okay? So the healthier you, you are inside, the healthier, the more glowing your skin is, okay? And 30% is from the outer nutrition. So 30% outer nutrition and 70% inner nutrition. So outer nutrition, we're talking about things like, you know, um, you know, um, you can go for like, you know, organic, you know, skin products or whatever product that you trust, right? You know, I mean, that could be another episode. We're not going to go into that today, all that external cosmetics. But you can see that from this formula, you know, the external stuff, you know, all that expensive cream and all that kind of miracle cream, a lot of ladies spend lots of money on is actually only just 30%. But most of it, you know, most of the, the goodness comes from what we feed our body with. So start taking care of your body, start taking care of your body inside by eating balanced and healthy nutritious, nutritious foods. Yeah. So that's my answer. <laughs> okay. Sorry. <laughs> you have amazing skin i this is yeah this i actually always struggled with my skin so this is something that yeah i see I'm glowing your skin too no it's, it's 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 not good i used to i used to get really bad acne and i still struggle with it to be honest um and then i think um it, it's so true though the happier that i noticed the times when i'm most happy and most relaxed that it's actually better so that's yeah. that's definitely the way that it's yeah it I like master, master skin like glows. Oh, God. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just beaming through his skin. Yeah. The, the next topic would be like, what is the miracle cream for master's flawless skin? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's actually happy cells. You, when your <laughs> cells are happy, the dancing, that's why they're glowing. Like they're having that disco party here, right? <laughs> so it's like a big disco ball here. <laughs> Right, just it's a very vivid way to remember that. Right, okay, I need to get my cells happy in order to be to have ha happy cells. I need to have happy, high vibrations. Okay, we'll talk about that another time. So, um, if you haven't, I know 
I know, we- right? We've been here for almost an hour and we only plan to be here for like half an hour. We're like, okay, Amy, let's just do it for like half an hour. Let's see what happens. And we got a lot of comments coming in. Um, yeah, so I know you guys probably, you know, enjoyed today's episode, episode one. Um, and let us know what you want uh, to hear from us, um, you know, in the future. And we'll decide what to talk about according to what you guys want, right? So we'll give you guys what you want, what you really, really want, Spice Girls. Okay, now... <laughs> Okay. Um, yeah. So I guess that's it for today. And thank you so much, Amy. You know, for taking the time out uh, mm-hmm. from your busy um, creator schedule to come here and have this hangout with me. Um, you know, we're here to hang out with everybody. And Ooh. don't forget, yes. Did you put the link in. Yes, I did. I did. I put the link in here. Oh, I see a lot of. I think there must be a delay on my feed. I start to see a lot of uh, messages coming in. Thank you so much. We'll give we'll give you guys a shout out before we. Um, before we conclude and make sure you do sign up for the five day body confidence challenge that's going to start next monday and master will be there to co-host this with me i have already put the link in here so maybe afterwards we'll put the link in the caption as well and uh, light say, said i love carbs yeah i had a good conversation with lights about the whole body image thing as well so yeah so next time maybe we can have her here as a guest yeah i i can't I have to, uh, people tell me to cook carbs and, and I actually eat at one meal a day is like very, very high carb, but just one of them I have in the me- evening or else I wake up really hungry in the morning. Um, right. And swimming is such a high calorie sport. I, I need it. So yeah. I need to- and you have all the muscles, right? The muscles burn more calories and burn faster too. Uh, so yes, please. Yes, agree, Amy. So I think they were agreeing with uh, eating carbs, I, I believe so. Oh, look, we have a message from Azili saying, Amy, you're so beautiful as your vibrations. Yes, happy cells. Okay, Natasha saying something about balance with crisp and chocolate. Yes. Okay, lots of I yes, eat a lot please. Of chocolate, guys. I eat a lot of dark chocolate. Uh, right, I'm, nice, nice. That's actually I'm not why really I'm a chocolate went. person, but I love ice cream. So <laughs> that's why I train so hard because I'm just thinking about dark chocolate. And <laughs> right, so I, I have to train hard to earn my chocolate. Right, dark chocolate is actually healthy for you. You know, like the the right dose, the right dosage. Anything too much is not good for you. Right, even um, carrots and apples. So that's great. And we got Asso here. Uh, Annie, hello from Scotland. Okay, nice, nice. Snifa, hello. Okay, great. Well, we've got so many people watching. Yes, yeah, so I guess um, this uh, our time is up for today. You know, I we're, we're very um, happy that all of you guys enjoyed the, the first episode. <laughs> I love hosting it as a show for some reason. It, it's just a habit of doing my YouTube thing. Um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this first episode. And if you guys do want to hear more, you know, like women's wellness related topics from us, let us know in the comment below and we'll answer your messages and we'll come here again next Wednesday. You want to be here again next Wednesday, Amy? Absolutely. I've loved this. Uh, we can Let's just talk. Maybe we'll talk for three hours one day. <laughs> I know Jean can talk and talk. Oh, so can you, Amy. <laughs> when the frequency is right, when the wavelength, <laughs> the wavelengths are matching, right? Then you just let it go forever. It's like continuing, right? <laughs> yes. I think, okay. Yeah, so we'll do next Wednesday at the same time. And I'm really That's excited. right. Same time. Make sure you tune in and also block your calendar for the five-day body confidence challenge. Okay. So thank you so much, everybody, for watching. We'll let you enjoy your Wednesday. And I'll see you guys next week. Love you, Amy. Love you. Bye. Bye. Bye.